point here we then work with this go to the consent agenda. Items on this evening's consent agenda consist of item number one or two or twenty twelve dash one sixteen. Oh wait a minute. Excuse me. Sorry. Ah, I got you. Do you need a motion to amend? One paper that's on the consent agenda. Okay. Thank you very much. Alright, before you read that, do we have any papers that need to be amended? Yes. Thank you. Item number 20, which is resolution number 2012-R114. That is to endorse for the city legislative proposal set forth within the document entitled 2013 City of Richmond Legislative Proposals for the Virginia General Assembly. To request the Richmond delegation of the General Assembly of Virginia to take legislative action consistent with and in vigorous support of such recommendations, to support other legislative recommendations, and to encourage other organizations and individuals to support such recommendations. Madam President. Yes, sir. Before we do that, can I add my vote to the previous paper? Yes, sir. Application for exemption by designation and provide a written report to the city council on each application 
shall be extended from February 1, 2013 to February 15, 2013, and that for each tax year thereafter, the deadline of the property tax exemption by designation committee to review each application for exemption by designation and provide a written report to the city council on each application shall be as, as set forth in section 98-248 of the code of the city of Richmond as amended until otherwise provided by law or ordinance. Page 2, line 18, at the beginning of the line, insert a section symbol and enter 3. And that paper is to be amended and continued. And I will need a motion to accept the amendment. Do you want to handle that paper now? Or are you going to handle number 20? Item number 20, which is going to be amended and voted upon. Yes, I would say that let's vote on this amendment. Okay. And then we'll just take the other thing from the Senate. Okay. I'll need a motion to accept the amendment to item number 20. Five that um, orders number 2012 188 as presented. Councilman Samuel, would you make that motion? So moved. Council is voting on Councilman Samuel's motion to accept the amendment to item number 25, which is orders number 2012 188 as presented, and that people will be continued to January 14, 2013. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Nuda? Aye. Ms. Trimble? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That motion is passed that paper will be before council again on January 14, 2013. Okay, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but you want to consent agenda back to that. Okay. And I don't know where you were. It's been a long night. Tonight's consent agenda consists of ordinance number 2012-116 to amend the city group by adding new division three for the purpose of establishing a citizen advisory commission on alternatives to incarceration. Item number five, ordinance number 2012-198 to authorize the CAO to execute an amendment, an amendment non-exclusive license agreement between the city as licensor and Megabus Northeast. LLC is licensing for the purpose of increasing the license fee and extending Megabus North East LLC's non-exclusive rights to use a certain bus stop, passenger boarding, and waiting area at the plaza directly across from Main Street Station. Item number six, orders number 2012-199 to amend orders number 2012-145-60 for the purpose of appropriating an additional four million. $402,955 in state revenue and revenue classified as other revenue. Can I can you explain a little bit? I'm sorry, which number is that? Number six. Uh, this, um, actually, Mr. Samuels asked about this. This is in, we, when we did the school's budget, we thought they could get one point something million, and instead it's four million from the state, so that's, that's state money. Yeah. I bet. Item number eight, which is ordered from the 2012 2201, to amend the city code by adding a new section 14 16 for the purpose of encouraging the use of green roofs. As a final of Virginia Code, by providing for the processing of building permit applications within 10 business days of associated plumbing, electrical, and mechanical permit applications within five business days. Item number nine, ordinance number 2012 203 to authorize the CAO to execute a master agreement for the use of Commonwealth transportation funds between the city and the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation for the purpose of utilizing grant proceeds from the department. Item number 10, on this bridge, 2012-204 to authorize the CAO to execute a grant agreement between the city and the Federal Transit Authority for the purpose of receiving federal funds, funding of $10,031,620 to fund the capital improvements at Main Street Station. Item 11, on this 2012-207 to authorize 
authorize the CAO to accept $59,671 from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and to appropriate the increase to the FY1213 stormwater utility budget for the purpose of forming a watershed coalition at the Bellevue Watershed to develop a watershed concept plan to restore the creek adjacent to Oak Grove Elementary School. Item 12.
this process is just beginning, so there's an opportunity for more people to get involved. It's a planning rate. It's a planning rate. Yes. And it's still in four stages, though, right? Is it just beginning? Yes. Okay. Um, is it already given your number?
Number 33, Resolution Number 2012-R149, to express opposition to the proposed Virginia Department of Transportation plan to toll Interstate 95. Request the Virginia Department of Transportation to develop a plan to meet the transportation needs of Virginia without tolling Interstate 95 and urge the Commonwealth of Virginia to bring together all affected businesses, industries, and local governments to develop a plan to improve Interstate 95. Madam President, those were all the items on tonight's consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This time we will go to the public. Is there anyone in opposition to any of the papers? Anyone in support of any of these papers? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Silver. Sorry. I apologize. My name is Silver Persinger, a citizen of Richmond, Virginia. I'd like to speak in opposition to two items. Number 14, uh, to declare surplus in conveying city owned land uh, at 2101 West Laverne Avenue to automate, Automation Technologies. I think that's also uh, known as AMF. And uh, selling property for $485,000. Uh, I don't want to know much about this deal, but I know of AMF and uh, I know about the declaring a property surplus. That's what you just did with uh, the West Hampton School. And my concern here is that uh, it's not an open process. It wasn't an open bid. And it looks to be more of the same uh, crony capitalism. Uh, I'd like to also express my opposition to item number one, to uh, create a so-called uh, Citizen Advisory Commission on Alternatives to Incarceration. That is not, in fact, what it really does. It's, uh, it's patroned by Mrs. Robertson, a lot of council people call her Mrs. Robinson, but her name is Robertson. Uh, she's also the chairwoman of the Finance and Economic Development Committee, and uh, that, 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 in essence, is what this paper is. Uh, I have some objections to the composition of, of the proposed board. It's a board with a, with a $5,000 expenditure annual. Uh, also, I think the work it will be doing is duplicative, and that uh, there's another board already established by the city called the Community Criminal Justice Board that is actually looking into the same thing, uh, alternative incarceration. Uh, this paper actually doesn't do very much. Dealing with that, uh, I guess Mrs. Robertson thinks the alternative to incarceration is getting a job. Uh, the commission, it says here on page five, the commission shall make recommendations the City Council and the Mayor concerning the following. One, solutions to any problems within communities of the city related to property values, real estate taxes, police and fire services, and public safety resulting from the presence of the Justice Center and community-based service facilities and other establishments providing alternatives to incarceration. It doesn't deal directly with alternatives to incarceration. It actually has to do with more with the property values and real estate taxes. Uh, the second charge given to the committee is uh, uh, the ways to establish inclusive, affordable housing that enhances the city's real property values, supports the public safety of the city, and offers quality housing for all residents, including formerly incarcerated and, and vulnerable persons. Again, that has to do with affordable housing, not alternatives to incarceration. And the third charge out of this list of like 15 charges or so, the third charge is uh, strategies to make the Justice Center an economic engine for the immediate surrounding community and the city as a whole. You know, this this has nothing to do with alternative incarceration. Uh, you know, the composition of the board, I would like to see uh, substance substance abuse counselors, mental health counselors. Uh, I object, object to the inclusion of the faith, faith community organization and the business community. Uh, also, charge uh, 11 of this uh, committee is to uh, the development of private business enterprises to provide employment to residents of the Justice Center and persons reentering the community after incarceration. Uh, you know, you all are familiar with uh, the program you have where you pay inmates ten dollars a day to cut grass and clear weeds. I'm not interested in extending such work programs for inmates or people in the Justice Center. And uh, finally, I'm concerned about this item number fifteen to. Uh, I guess it's to, uh, this is a recommendation to uh, study the feasibility of creating a reserve fund to purchase and resell homes which have not sold at fair market value due to the proximity of such homes to the Justice Center. Uh, my concern with that is you're, you're again, as, 
as with these surpluses, you're circumventing the free market. You know, fair market value is determined by its locations in the justice center. You know, this, this paper is, is flawed. Uh, it makes no, no reference to the Community uh, Criminal Justice Board. Uh, Ms. Uh, Davis, uh, your, your uh, policy advisor, she said that this, this board will work closely, closely with that group. It's not, it doesn't say that in this paper. And, you know, I think a great way of getting the, you know, why, why isn't a member of the community a uh, criminal justice board a member being appointed to a member as, as this committee? Uh, there was a gentleman who spoke at the public safety meeting on Monday, and uh, he made a recommendation that you all have the right to extend the membership of, of, uh, of the criminal justice board. And these are charges that you could give to that board instead of creating a whole new board that will continue to perpetuate, continue forever. And uh, you know, I don't think it's needed. Uh, you know, I think council members probably even haven't read, read the paper. Uh, thank you for your opportunity to come.
Any other comments on the consent agenda? Uh, Madam President. Yes, sir. Uh, I, uh, Well, we, that we need to apply both, but we haven't been briefed on it enough to know 
uh, I don't know if John Selma has been briefed on it enough to know uh, the answer to that question, so I'm going to leave him alone. Uh, I just want to make that point. Hey, Madam President, I think we have somebody that may have missed the public comment on this paper. Yeah, is it still open for public comment? Or? It's, it's fine if it's not. Uh, well, it's not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you in the room and just missed it? I, I just wanted a point of clarification regarding the polling issue. Uh, it's actually not under the General Assembly's jurisdiction. It's a matter of VDOT. So uh, it's, I'm working with the 22 localities in opposition to this. We should ask this plan. Yeah, would you step up the mic and give me a little bit more? Sure, my name is Casey Wardman. Um, and I would just like to remind that in the initial VDOT proposal, there was also a toll that was initially supposed to be placed in Caroline County as well on 95. So that would have put Richmond smack dab in the middle of two tolling facilities on 95. Um, a major impact in, in their application to uh, the Federal Highway Administration. They indicated that 35 to 40 percent of all vehicles on 95 would defer around the toll. Uh, in, a, in the first 10 years, that's 38 percent of all revenue generated would be going towards the maintenance and operation of that toll. 38 percent. Uh, this really isn't an either or issue of gas tax or not. It's just strictly in opposition to tolling up 95, uh, which should be on the radar as well. They've also proposed to toll 64 as well. Madam President. Yes, sir. And, and you, Joe, you work for who? I'm working in support of these 22 localities. Representing who? Uh, I work for a, a firm here called Capital Results. And those 22 localities be localities in opposition? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Yes. In this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That's okay. Any other comments? All right. Madam Clerk, let's call the question. Councilors, voting on tonight's consent agenda consisting of items 15, 6, 8 through 16, 20 as amended through 22, 28 and 33. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilton? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jill? Aye. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No, I'm sorry. Are you I except for number 33, Mr. Jill? I'm, uh, I'm I except for number 33. I'm so sorry. Heavy bees. Ms. Newman? Aye. Ms. Trimble? Aye. Mr. Todd? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Mr. Davis Walden and Nelson? All right, thank you, Madam Clark. All right, this time we're going to go to um, announcements. 